to the Gospel of John, 14th chapter, and our sermon text is going to be verse 6. I'm going to take a few minutes to kind of lay the background here. John 14, 6. In chapter 13, Jesus knew that his end was coming. He was going to depart out of this world. And in chapter 14, the beginning of it, in verse 2, he's talking about, in my father's house, many mansions. And he goes on to say, I go to prepare a place for you. He knows he's leaving this present world. In verse 3, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself where I am, there ye may be also. The fifth verse Thomas, thank God for Thomas, because there are people who will ask questions that you want to ask, but don't do it, waiting for somebody to ask the question, here's Thomas. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, we don't know where you're going, and how can we know the way? If we don't know where you're going, how can we know the way? Which opens the door for Jesus to give him a one-verse answer that says it all. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So you want to know where we're going? We're going to the Father, but you can't get to him, Thomas, unless you go through me. Because I am the way, Jesus is saying, the truth and the life. We find this, the way, several times in the book of Acts. And turn with me, Acts 9, verses 2. Acts 9, verses 2. And here we have Paul. He is seeking a letter from the high priest to give him authority to go out and hunt down the Christians so that he can bind them and bring them back to Jerusalem. And in verse 2, Desired of him letters to Damascus, to to the synagogues, then if he found any of this way, whether they are men or women, he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. And so there is this, this way, and it's the way of Jesus Christ is what he's talking about. And 20 years later, in Acts 19.23, please turn to it, Acts 19.23, the same Paul is in Ephesus. And the Lord uses him in a great and mighty way, and there are miracles that are being performed. You can read that in the 11th verse and so on. In verse 17 to verse 20, there's a great revival that is stirred up in Ephesus because of what the people have seen. Go with me to verse 23. This great revival and people are throwing away their old books and they're turning to Jesus Christ. And the same time there arose no small stir among about that way. And what was happening is those that were making artifacts for worship of gods were losing money. 
because the people didn't want that anymore. They were turning to the Almighty. And so it was affecting these people here, their pocketbooks. And it caused a stir, a great disturbance among the people about the way. The same Paul who wanted to go out and persecute these people about the way now is the, re is the reason that we have this revival going on and the people are disturbed about that way. Some of the people. Praise the Lord. When you affect the enemy in his pocketbook, that's what matters to him. And you're going to find, you're going to find opposition. Praise God. Especially in the political field. <clears throat> Praise God. We'll go back now to <clears throat> John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. Jesus is the way. But Jesus brought conflict in this world when he came. And he says so. And we find it in verse, in Matthew 10, 34. Matthew 10, 34 beginning with verse 34. We're talking about Jesus Christ, the way. And he says here, Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. I am come to set man at variance against the, his father and the daughter and so on. And when you present the truth, and you present the way, that is exactly what is going to happen. We continue on verse 38, and Jesus continues to say this, And he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. And Jesus is talking to this people. His reason for being is to bring the truth. And the truth is what causes separation. The truth is what causes conflict. You can see it right now. People would rather prefer, prefer to believe a lie. And that's where the conflict comes. And Jesus said, take up your cross. It's not something you hang around the neck. The cross is embedded in the heart. It's embedded in the heart and all that, all the Satan's hell can't break, can't take it away. Because it's in the heart, not around the neck. Take up your cross and we go to Luke. Jesus speaks of this in Luke. Luke 9, 23. And he said to them, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. It's not a one time a week, one time a month, whenever I feel like it. But taking up the cross moment by moment. Praise the Lord. And that is what causes separation. The cross of Christ. The way, the truth, the life. It causes families to be separated. Conflicts. Great disturbances. Just like we read in, in Acts. A great disturbance about that way. We're part of that way, church. We're part of that way. The groundwork was laid when Jesus walked the face of this earth and died on the cross for you and me. But continually, it tells us daily, but it's continuous. Cross of Christ. Oh yeah. We saw, we know what happened in the history of this church when it was first founded. The first generation that way caused conflict in the community, caused 
conflict in families, separation. But that's what Jesus said. I didn't come to bring peace. I brought to bring the sword of the Word. And that afflicts, inflicts pain. I don't want that. I want the easy life. It's the easy life that will take one to hell. It's the straight and narrow, the hard way. You have chosen the hard way. Did you know that? Praise the Lord. But it's a conflict. But Jesus not only is the way, but He's also the way maker. He is the way, but He makes a way where there is no way. It causes me to reflect on my traveling days in Europe. A friend of mine, a soldier friend and I, drove around in Switzerland and southern part of France and along the coast into Rome, and then we went north. He did the driving, it was his car, and I was the navigator, so I had the map. And when you leave Italy and go into Austria, as you're approaching the northern part of Italy, it's a mountainous region. The Alps, very high. And the map said, there is a way through, it's called the Brenner Pass, I think about that. And as we were driving north, the map said, there's a way through, but you can't see it. Could not see the Brenner Pass from afar. We're driving, and we're trusting the map is right, and we're on the right road. The way, we're talking about the way, brother and sister, here's our guide, right here. And as we're going north, there it is, the Brenner Pass, a way through that mountain. There was no way that car, old car, could climb over the top of the Alps. But there was a way. And it's the same for us. The obstacles that we face in our lives are immovable sometimes. And there's no way that we can get through and go over that mountain, but the Lord makes a way. He is the way maker, church. But we have to trust in Him. No matter how large that obstacle is in your life. Praise the Lord. There are many testimonies in the history of this church on how the Lord has made a way where there was no way. But it's not going to happen unless we have that faith in Him. As we had that, my friend and I had that trust in that map that there's a way through this mountain range. And if it wasn't for that, we would not have made it. And if it wasn't for the way maker, you're not going to make it either. Praise the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The cross gets heavy sometimes. Sometimes we drag that cross. We can't carry it. It's too heavy. Years ago, there was, I mentioned this some time ago, there was a a woman of color that attended our church on a Sunday night. She did housework for some of the members of the church. And she had a saying that she would repeat often. And she would say it, you know, they have a way of expressing themselves that are catching. Don't drag your cross, pick it up, she would tell the church. And that's remained with me ever since. Praise the Lord. He'll give us the strength to pick up that cross. That cross is what identifies us. We are not of the world. We're not of them that draw back into perdition. 
It's the cross that identifies us, but it's in the heart. It's not on a wall. And I'm glad we don't have a cross on a wall. It's better to have it in the heart. Amen? If it's not in the heart, what good is it doing on the wall or around the neck? Praise God. But we find the way. The times is difficult. Psalmist has this to say. Psalm 1 verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Okay, right there's a problem. You're not going to walk in the counsel of the ungodly, so that means you're separated from the ungodly. And when that happens, you become a target for the ungodly. Nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And what I'm hearing today, the violation of God's Word is accepted even by Christians today. Violating His Word. Are we not, are they not being scornful? I'm talking to you. When you violate the Word of God and take the life of an unborn child, You're violating the Word of God and you are scorning the Word. Are you hearing me? I may get some hate mail, but that's all right. We stand on the Word of God and not on the favor of man. That's what politicians do. There's no room for a politician in the pulpit. It's the Word of God. We must declare it. Isn't that right, brother? No matter what the cost is. Praise the Lord. Just remember, you're going to give an answer someday, Christian. You're going to give an answer for sitting in the seat of the scornful. You're scorning the Word of God when you say it's okay to take a life of an unborn Praise the Lord. I had no intention of saying those words, but I feel the power and the burning of the Holy Spirit within me. Those in the pulpit need to take a stand. Praise God. And not be afraid. It's not a matter of politics. It's a matter of violating the Word of God. Are you hearing me? Oh, you're taking sides on politics. Brother, we're taking sides with the Lord and the Word of God. And there's no compromise. Praise God. I'm going to go back to John and to close this message out. Remember, He is the way, the truth and the life. But He also makes a way. I couldn't make it on my own. And neither can you. The mountain's too high. And the valley's too deep. But He is the one that makes the way. The Brenner Pass is in my mind as I see it. We're traveling north. There it is. There it is. But you can't see it from afar. It takes, in the spiritual realm, it takes faith. Lord, I know what your word said. You had never failed me yet. And he won't. Praise God. Pick up your cross. Don't drag it. And he'll give you the strength to go through those things that you think are insurmountable. He's done it for me. He's done it for many in here. And He'll do it for you. In the name of the Lord be praised.